Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the 10th topic of Form 4, which is called radioactivity. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that intrinsic motivation is a consequence of doing things you like. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at radioactive decay and specifically we'll be focusing on nuclear equations. So we start by discussing the first type of radiation which is called the alpha uh, particle. So we look at the alpha decay. So if a nuclide X decays by emitting an alpha particle, then its mass number decreases by 4 and its atomic number decreases by 2 to form another nuclide Y. So the original nuclide, we call it the parent nuclide. Then of course the new formed nuclide, we call it the daughter nuclide. So in terms of an equation, we have a parent nuclide X, which has a mass number A, then atomic number Z. Then of course it is decaying by releasing an alpha particle. Then remember we said an alpha particle is usually represented by a helium, which usually has a mass number 4, then atomic number 2. So uh, this particular parent nuclide X is decaying by releasing an alpha particle and of course giving us a daughter a nuclide Y. So we expect the mass number of the daughter nuclide to reduce by 4, then of course the atomic number to reduce by 2. So the key thing is to ensure that the mass numbers on the right hand side of the equation balances with the mass numbers on the left hand side of the equation uh, and the same case applies for the atomic number. So for example you can see uh, the mass number of this particular uh, daughter nuclide is actually reducing by 4, so from A minus 4. So if you take A minus 4, then of course you add 4 of the helium, you are going to get A, which is actually the mass number of the parent nuclide. Similarly, for the case of atomic number, you can see the atomic number is actually reducing by 2. So if you take Z minus 2, then you add the 2 of this particular helium, you are going to get Z, which is actually... Uh, the atomic number of the parent nuclide, which was actually uh, X. So the key thing is to ensure that the, uh, both the mass numbers and the atomic number on the right hand side and the left hand side of the equation are actually balancing. So we look at a typical example, which is involving uh, polonium, which are, is actually decaying by releasing an alpha particle to form lead. So the polonium has a mass number of 210, then atomic number 84. So it is decaying by releasing an alpha particle. Then we said alpha particle is represented by a helium, of course, which has a mass number 4, then atomic number 2. So uh, for this particular equation to balance, we have to reduce uh, the mass number of uh, polonium by 4. So that if you take 210 minus 4, you are going to get 206, which becomes... Uh, the mass number of lead. Similarly, for this particular equation to balance, you can see helium has an atomic number of 2, which is actually representing the alpha particle. Therefore, for us uh, to find uh, lead such that this equation balances, we have to reduce the atomic number of polonium by 2, such that 84 minus 2, you're actually going to get 82. So the lead has now a mass number of 206, then of course atomic number 82, such that this particular equation is balanced. So if you take 206 plus 4, you are going to get 210. Similarly, if you take 82 plus 2, you are going to get 84. So you can see the equation is balanced on both sides of the equation. Then uh, the second type of radiation is what we call the beta, uh, the beta particle. So of course we look at the beta decay. So Unlike the alpha decay, for the case of beta decay, if a nuclide decays by emitting a beta particle, then its mass number remains constant, but its atomic number increases by 1. Remember in our previous uh, lesson, which was radioactivity lesson 1, we actually said that beta particle is represented by uh, an electron. Then of course we know that an electron has no mass number or its mass number is zero, then of course atomic number is actually negative one. So because the atomic number is negative one, for the equation to balance, then the daughter uh, nuclide, we have to increase its 
uh, atomic number by one such that the equation will balance with uh, uh, the left hand side so we consider apparent uh, nuclide x which has a mass number a then of course atomic number z so uh, which is decaying by releasing a beta particle so the beta particle is represented by this particular uh, electron here so you can see the mass number of the electron is zero therefore we do not expect any change on the daughter uh, nuclide uh, formed as a result of uh, the parent nuclide x actually releasing a beta particle so you can see that the original mass number was a then of course also the final mass number is still a such that if you take a plus zero you are still going to get a so you can see the mass numbers are actually balancing on both sides of the equation but for the case of atomic number we have to increase the atomic number of the daughter uh, nuclide by one such that if you take z plus one then you add negative one of course positive one plus minus one you are going to get uh, zero such that we'll just have z plus zero which is actually z and you can see the original uh, or the parent nuclide had an atomic number of z so you can see the equation is actually balanced so in a typical example we look at this particular uh, element which is called uh, beryllium of course it is decaying by releasing a beta particle to give us another element here which is called boron so for this particular equation to get balanced you can see uh, the mass number is remaining constant uh? so the mass number of um, beryllium was 11 then of course the mass number of boron which is still 11 so the mass number remains constant but for the case of the atomic number the atomic number has to increase by one such that the atomic number of beryllium was four but the atomic number of the formed boron actually increases by one that is four plus one you are going to get five so you can see if you take 5 plus minus 1, you're actually going to get 4. Then if you take 11 plus 0, you're actually going to get the same same 11. So the key thing is to ensure that the both the mass number and the atomic numbers are balancing, both on the right-hand side and the left-hand side of the equation. Next, we look at the third and the last type of radiation, which is called the gamma ray. So we look at the gamma decay. So emission of gamma ray has no effect on the mass number and the atomic number of a given nuclide. For example, if we have a parent nuclide X, which, is, uh, which has a mass number A, then of course atomic number Z, if it decays by emitting a gamma ray, then we do not expect any changes on its mass number and the atomic number. So you can see uh, the parent uh, nuclide had a mass number A, then atomic number Z, then of course the daughter nuclide is still X, which still has a mass number A, then of course atomic number Z. So uh, the reason is because uh, the gamma ray does not have any mass number, neither does it have any atomic number. So if you take A plus zero, you are going to get A. Then of course, if you take Z, which is the atomic number plus zero, you'll still get Z. So the key thing is to ensure that uh, both the mass number and the atomic number on the right hand side and the left hand side of the equation are at balance. So we look at an example, so we consider a uh, cobalt which has a mass number of 60, then atomic number 27. If it decays by emitting a gamma ray, so we do not expect any changes on its mass number, neither do we expect any changes on its uh, atomic number. So you can see the parent uh, nuclide of cobalt had a mass number of 60, then the daughter nuclide also has a mass number of 60 then it uh the parent nuclide had an atomic number of 27 similarly the daughter uh, nuclide still has uh an atomic number of 27 then of course we add the uh, gamma ray which has been uh released as a result of uh cobalt actually decaying then we look at um, some mixed examples so the first one is called uh so we have radium undergoes a radioactive decay by emitting an alpha particle to form a daughter nuclide Q as shown in the uh, reaction below. So we are told to determine the values of X and Y. So this is the equation that we are given. So we have radium which has uh, a mass number of 226, then of course atomic number 88. Then it is uh, decaying by releasing an alpha particle to form uh, a nuclide or a daughter nuclide Q 
which has a mass number x then atomic number y so we are told to find the values of the unknowns x and y so remember that we said that an alpha particle is usually represented by helium which has a mass number 4 then atomic number 2 so for this equation to be balanced we are simply going to equate uh, the mass numbers on the right hand side of the equation and the left hand side of the equation so you can see radium had a mass number of 226 which should be equal to the sum of the mass numbers of helium and the new daughter nuclide x therefore 226 should be should give us 4 plus x of course x represents the mass number of uh, the daughter nuclide q so if you take 226 is equals 4 plus x i want to make x subject of the formula so for me to achieve that i'm going to take 4 to the other side so that i have uh, x being equal to 226 minus 4 which gives me 222 so that is the value of x which represents the mass number of uh, the daughter nuclide q similarly the atomic number on the left hand side and the right hand side should be at balance therefore if i take the atomic number of radium which is 88 actually should be equal to the sum of the atomic numbers of uh, alpha particle of course which is represented by helium which is 2 then and the atomic number of the new uh, nuclide which is formed that or the daughter nuclide uh, of q which has an atomic number of y so if i take 88 should be equal to 2 plus y so 88 is equals to 2 plus y i'm simply equating the atomic numbers therefore if i make y subject of the formula i'm simply going to take 2 to the uh the other side so that i have y being equal to 88 minus 2 which gives me 86 so 86 actually represents the atomic number of um, q next we look at our second example which reads that the following is part of a radioactive series so this is the radioactive series whereby we have a parent nuclide x which is decaying to give us a daughter nuclide y then in the process it is emitting particle r then of course a uh, nuclide y is also decaying to give us another nuclide z but in the process it is emitting an alpha particle then of course nuclide z is decaying to give us another nuclide q but in the process it is emitting particle p so part a they want us to identify the radiation marked r of course we know that we have three types of radiations one we have the alpha particle two we have the beta particle and lastly we have what we call the gamma radiation so we expect r to be at least one of these uh, three types of radiations so because r is actually the particle released when a uh, parent uh, nuclide x is decaying to give us y we are going to consider this equation for uh, the parent nuclide x which is giving us a daughter nuclide y so uh, if we consider the parent nuclide x it actually has a mass number of 210 similarly the daughter nuclide y also has the same same mass number of 210 so that means that the particle r for this particular equation to be balanced both on the left and the right hand side then particle r must be having no mass number or must have uh, a mass number of zero so that when you take 210 plus zero you are still going to get 210 then if we look at the atomic numbers uh, particle x or the nuclide x had an atomic number of 83 but the daughter uh, nuclide y its atomic number is actually increasing by one so from 83 to 84 the atomic number has increased by one for this particular equation of the atomic numbers to be balanced both on the right hand side and the left hand side then it means the particle r must have an atomic number of negative one such that when you take 84 plus minus uh, one then you are going to get 83 so if we look at the particle or the radiation r it has no mass number but it has an atomic number of negative one so this one simply suggests to us that the particle r is actually an electron because we know that an electron has no mass number uh, but has an atomic number of negative one then we said an electron is used to represent what we call the beta particle therefore uh, the radiation r is actually a beta particle because it is equal to an electron and of course an electron usually represents the beta particle then part b they want us to determine the values of b and c 
So if we look at this particular equation, B and C is uh, resulting from nuclide Z. Of course, B is the mass number of Z. Then, of course, C is the atomic number of nuclide Z. So I'm going to consider this equation whereby we have uh, nuclide Y, which is decaying by releasing an alpha particle to give us nuclide Z. So if I consider this equation, we are having Y, so element or uh, that is uh, nuclide Y, which has a mass number of 210 and atomic number of 84, is actually decaying to give us an alpha particle. Then we know that alpha particles are usually represented by uh, helium. So of course helium usually has a mass number of 4 and atomic number of 2. So if I take Y, I'm supposed to get a Z, of course, which has um, a B and C as its mass numbers and atomic numbers respectively. Then, of course, I add uh, that uh, the mass number and the atomic numbers of helium. So from if I compare the mass numbers, both on the left hand side and the right hand side of this equation, I'll be in a position to get the value of B. So 210, which is the mass number of Y, should be equal to the sum of the mass numbers of Z and the mass number of helium. So if you take 210, it should be equal to B plus 4. Therefore, 210 is equal to B plus 4. If I make B subject of the formula, I'll simply take 4 to the uh, left-hand side so that B will be equal to 210 minus 4, which will give me 206. Therefore, it means that the mass number of Z is actually 206. Remember, if you take 206 plus 4, you are going to get 210, which is the mass number of the parent nuclide Y. Similarly, if I equate the values of the atomic numbers on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, they are supposed to be equal. So if I take 84, it should be equal to C, which is the atomic number of Z, plus 2, which is the atomic number of the alpha particle, which is represented by the helium. Therefore, 84 should be equal to C plus 2. Therefore, 84 is C plus 2. If I make C subject of the formula, 2 will uh, move to the other side so that it becomes a negative. So C will be equal to 84 minus 2, which gives me 82 as the atomic number of uh, element or the nuclide uh, Z. Then part D, they want us to identify the radiation marked P. So of course P is resulting from the equation of Z, which is decaying by releasing particle P to give us a daughter nuclide Q. So from this equation Z, of course Z had uh, the mass number of B and atomic number of C. But because we have already computed the values of B and C, I'm going to substitute in this equation. So Z has a mass number of B, but we know that the value of B, we have found it as 206. Therefore, we'll have Z with a mass number of 206. Then atomic number C, but the value of C is 82. So atomic number is 82. Uh, it should give me uh, the daughter nuclide Q, of course, by releasing a uh, particle P. Therefore, this should be equal to Q, which is has a mass number of 206 and atomic number of actually uh, 82. Then uh, we are going to add the element, of course, P, which is being released, or the radiation P, which is being released. So we can see that if we try to compare the values on the uh, the values of the mass numbers, you realize that Z has a mass number of 206. Similarly, Q, which is the uh, daughter uh, nuclide, also has a mass number of 206. Then similarly, the atomic number is 82 for Z, and the atomic number for Q is also 82. So that means for this particular equation to balance, then P must have no mass number, neither should it have an atomic number. Because if you take 206 plus 0, you are going to get 206. If you take 82 plus 0, you are still going to get 82. So uh, a radiation with no mass number and no atomic numbers, that is what we are calling the gamma radiation. Therefore, it means P is actually a gamma ray. Therefore, the full equation should be Z, which is two, has a mass number of 206 and atomic number of 82, should give us Q, which is 206 uh, mass number, and 82 as its atomic number. Then, of course, we are adding P. P is simply a gamma ray, because gamma rays do not have uh, mass numbers, neither do they have an atomic number. Therefore, it simply means P is actually a gamma ray. Next. We look at our third and last example, which reads that uranium, which has a mass number of 238 and then atomic number 92, undergoes a decay to become lead. Of course, lead, which has a mass number of 206 and, of course, atomic number 82. 
So we are told to find the number of alpha and beta particles emitted in this particular process. So I'm going to write the nuclear equation for this reaction. So we have uranium mass number 238, atomic number 92, which is actually decaying by releasing uh, an alpha particle, a given number of alpha particles, and of course, beta particles. So we know that alpha particles are denoted by uh, helium, of course, which has a mass number of 4 and atomic number 2. Then we know that beta particles are usually denoted by an electron, which has no mass number, but has an atomic number of negative 1. So, because we don't know the number of alpha particles uh, which are present or which are being emitted, we let the number of uh, alpha particles to be x. Then because we also don't know the number of beta particles which are being emitted, we let the number of beta particles to be denoted by y. Therefore, from this particular nuclear equation, I'm going to open this bracket. So I'll have uranium, which has a mass number of 238, then atomic number 92, being equal to uh, lead, of course, which has a mass number of 206, and atomic number 82, then plus, if you take x multiplied by uh, the mass number of helium, you are going to, to get 4x, then of course, x will also multiply by the atomic number of helium, which is 2x. Similarly, uh, y is going to multiply by the atom that is the mass number of um uh the mass number of a beta particle of course which is an electron so y times zero then of course y is also going to multiply with the atomic number of an electron which of course is negative one y now i'm going to equate the uh, mass numbers on the right hand side and the left hand side of the equation so of course on the left hand side we have the mass number of uranium which is 238 being equal to uh, on the right hand side we have the mass number of lead which is 206 then of course plus the mass number of helium is 4x where x represents the number of uh, of course alpha particles then of course plus uh, 0 multiplied by y of course which represents the uh, mass number of the electrons in this particular case so from this equation we have 238 being equal to 206 then plus 4x of course 0 times y you are going to get 0 so the equation disintegrates to 238 is equal to 206 plus 4x. If I make 4x subject of the formula, I'm going to take 206 to the left-hand side. Of course, it will become a negative so that we have 238 minus 206 being equal to 4x. Then, of course, 238 minus 206, you're going to get 32. So 32 is equals 4x. Dividing through by 4, we are going to get x being equal to 34 over 4, which gives us 8. Then remember, uh, the value of x represents the number of alpha particles that were actually uh, released in this particular uh, decay equation. Therefore, it means that the number of alpha particles that were emitted were actually 8. Therefore, the emitted alpha particles uh, is equal to the number of x, which is actually equal to 8. Then, similarly, we are going to equate uh, the values of the uh, atomic numbers on the right and the left-hand side of the equation. So, uranium had an atomic number of 92 being equal to uh, the atomic number on the right hand side will be 82 which is the atomic number for the lead then plus 2x the atomic number for the uh, alpha or the helium then of course uh, plus the atomic number for the electrons which is negative 1 multiplied by y of course which is negative y or negative 1y so this will give us 92 is equal to 82 plus 2x minus y then of course uh, I'm going to substitute the value of x that I've already gotten from uh, this first equation. So eight, uh, x was actually equal to 8. So if I substitute 8 where we have x, this equation will disintegrate to 92 is equal to 82 plus 2 into 8, then of course minus y. So this will be 92 is equal to 82 plus 2 by 8, you are going to get 16. Then of course I'm going to make y subject of the formula, so I'll take y. Uh, to the left hand side then 92 to the right hand side so i'm going to get y being equal to 82 plus 16 minus 92 if you compute this on your calculator you're gonna get 6 so y is equals to 6 but remember y represents the number of uh electrons or simply the beta particles that were emitted in this particular nuclear equation therefore the emitted beta particles are simply the number of at the value of y which is equals to 6 therefore in conclusion we had eight alpha particles that were emitted and of course six beta particles that were emitted in this particular uh, nuclear uh, reaction lastly 
I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to gauge the understanding of the concept that you have just learned. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that intrinsic motivation is a consequence of doing things you like. So the quote is encouraging us to do things that align with our ambition and passion. Most of us complain about feeling demotivated whenever we try to work. The reason is because we have not taken time to discover what kind of work aligns with our dreams, our passions, and our inner self. We should therefore strive to do meaningful work that has an impact in someone else's life. Remember that legacy will always give you more fulfillment than success. And lastly, recall that confidence minus humility is equal to arrogance. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.